One of the things that you encounter when you're designing a web page that causes quite a bit of trouble is the fact that different browsers and different versions of the same browser may display a web page very differently. And that's because the browser defaults are set up differently. So in order to get around this problem, what oftentimes designers will do is they'll create what's called a CSS reset. Here you can see I've got just a sample HTML document set up here. It's got some pictures and a table and a list of information and an image down here. Now I want to make sure that regardless of what browser uh, my visitor is looking at this page in, that it's always going to be displayed the same. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to use something called a reset CSS style sheet. And you can see that right here. I've created one. Now this isn't an original creation. This is sort of an amalgamation of several uh, popular CSS reset. Um, sheets, but it's the one that works the uh, best for uh, me. And all you have to do to go to Google is go to Google and uh, look at CSS Reset, um, and you'll find a bunch of different sheets. Probably the two most popular ones, or the three most popular ones, are the Blueprint Reset, the Eric Meyer Reset, and the Yahoo Reset. But there's nothing special about these. You just need to find one and create one that works for you. So this is the one that works for me. You can see I've started off here with just my two most basic tags, HTML and body, and I'm zeroing out all the margin, padding, and border here. I'm also setting the background for tra to transparent, and I'm setting a font size of 12 pixels. And that way, if I decide to use proportional font sizes later on, I always know what my base font size is going to be. So for instance, let's say I make an H2 uh, 200%. If I haven't set any other sizes that are closer to that element that enclose that H1, it's going to come back here to the body tag and find font size 12 pixels. So 200% would make that font size 12 pixels. And then I've come down here and listed a bunch of my block level elements and my um, my uh, typography elements. And again, I've zeroed out the margin, padding, and uh, borders. I've also zeroed out the outline, set the vertical alignment to the baseline, and set the background transparency, um, or set the background to transparent. So a lot of the same things that we did up here, uh, with the exception of the fact that I didn't specify the font size for these. I specified it right here, because I wouldn't want to uh, have to make these individual changes. And then I've come along and I've placed my HTML5 semantic elements into a group style. And you'll see here I've got article, footer, header, age group, nav, section, all my basic HTML5 semantic tags. And I want to ensure that all browsers display those as block level elements. So I've gone ahead and set the display property to block for these. And then I've come down and I've set up a style for all of my, again, my typographic elements here. And basically what I've done is I've set the font by doing the font family, the size, the weight, and the style. I've set the line height, taken off any indentation and decoration, aligned everything to the left, and reset the color for all of these elements to black. And then I've come down here at OL and UL, and I usually want to remove um, the list styles, um, the bullets from those list styles. So I've gone ahead and used the list style um, option here and set it up as none. A lot of people will do this, but they won't do OL because they want their ordered list to remain numbered. So you could very well just do UL just to take off your um, bullets. But it's very easy in your other CSS sheet to add those bullets on. And then finally, I've come down here to the table, command, table um, selector, and I've placed a couple of different styles. Bo I've set the border collapse to collapse and the border spacing to zero for any table elements that are on my page. Now, once you've actually come up with a CSS reset sheet that works for you, there's a couple different ways that you can use it. I'm just going to go ahead and save 
that and I'm going to come back in here to the reset.html. One way is that you can just go into every single CSS file that you work with and you can copy and paste the contents from your reset CSS into um, your regular CSS or your standard CSS style sheet. The other thing you can do is you can import that option. And what I've actually done is I've placed the reset CSS in the same folder as my HTML file and my regular CSS file. And what that's going to allow me to do is come in here to the snippets section. If you haven't used snippets in Dreamweaver CS5, um, we have another video on this. This is very, very useful. And basically, Dreamweaver has put a bunch of snippets that they think are going to be useful to you. You can delete these, and I usually do. But you can also create your own snippet. And a snippet is just a piece of code. And there's the import command that's going to import the reset CSS styles into my current style sheet. So I'll go ahead and double click on that. And that's all I have to do to add those styles to my style sheet. And it sort of works just like an include in HTML. And you can see all of my styles have been removed from my text when I added that. So you can keep your reset CSS sheet in one central place. And whenever you update that CSS sheet, this import command will automatically include those updates in, um, in, your, um, in all of your designs. Now, the last thing I'll mention about CSS resets is what some people do is they use a wildcard style. And then they come down, and all they do is they zero out the margins, the padding, and their borders. And this is fine. It works, and works very well for simple pages or mock-ups or examples. But the problem is that it's going to actually zero out the margin, padding, and border on everything. And a lot of times, people don't want that. For instance, your form elements, your buttons, things like that, you're going to want some uh, margin, padding, and border on, um, on those elements. So that's the reason why, um, for a real website, I would discourage you from using this style. The other thing that you can do with a reset style sheet that you can't do, which is the simple wildcard, is you can come in and specify for um, certain tags the font or the text properties and the color properties. You can go ahead and in your reset sheet ensure that certain elements like the HTML5 elements are displayed as block level items. So there's a lot more you can do with this CSS reset than just simply zero out um, your borders, margin, and padding. And if you're interested in using this reset, maybe as um, um, a basis for your own, just go ahead and go to our website and you can download it.